Hey, what's up, Killer Knife fans? So today, we're going to be reviewing the Cold Steel Recon 1, which is essentially a cult classic amongst knife collectors. So let's just jump right into it. Let's get some size comparisons going on so everybody can get an idea. Now, the size comparisons I have, I picked out are definitely knives that you guys may have in your collection or are using as your EDC currently. Um, I didn't pick any knives that are, you know, bigger or dwarfing this knife. So uh, the knife to me is a, is a beautiful size. Um, we'll get into that as we do these size comparisons, but this knife is going to be bigger than all the size comparisons. You got Ultratech by Microtech. You have a PM2 by Spyderco. Spyderco Delica. A bunch bench made bug out. Right. Um, a recon one's Demco brother, the eighty fifteen. And the AD ten. All right, so as you guys can see, the Recon 1 is larger than all of those knives um, in length. Uh, the AD-10 is definitely a little fatter. Let's get a weight on this. Five point four five ounces, right? So it's not a light weight knife. Um, it's definitely not the heaviest knife in the world. Um, for me, it's right about perfect. Um, now I don't mind a knife going all the way up to about. I mean, personally, actually, I, I really don't care that much. I like a big chunky knife, big fat, twelve ounce, sixteen ounce knife on my side, but. As far as comfortability goes, you know, six ounces, give or take, is like, it's super duper comfortable for me to walk around and not really think about it um, in the sense of, can I feel it? Is, it? is it weighing me down? Is it bothering me? Is it in my way if I go in my pocket? Um, yeah, so got great weight, beautiful size, excellent ergonomics. The ergonomics on this knife are to be unrivaled in a lot of ways. You have a beautiful, beautiful finger guard here that's flat, so it's unobtrusive in your pocket, and a great size for any finger, I would say. Um, if you have really huge hands, maybe this isn't big enough for you, but it's curving up under your finger, so, you know, or it could be there which is gonna be below your knuckle. Um, but anyways, I think it's an excellent, excellent size. You can see my hand on it. Um, I, I wear like a large or an extra large glove sometimes, depending on the, the brand maker of the glove. And you get really excellent ergonomics out of this. About three and a half inches of usable blade. About four inches overall here. Um, it's a hollow grind. Really uh, simple thumb, thumb disc here, thumb stud. And you have a clip here, which will get scuffed up as you can see, um, but this is completely ambidextrous so you can use it in your left hand 
I'm not that good with that, but you can do it. I can't do it. But if you're lucky, you can do it. I find myself to be pretty ambidextrous, but I don't really do that. So all in all, great G10. My version is extremely smooth. Um, you know, it has texturing milled into it, but nothing that's going to bother you. Um, let's see if we can get a good angle on that for everybody to see. Yeah, it's pretty smooth. No high ridges, no large ridges. Pretty, pretty smooth. I heard a lot of people will sand under here. I've never found a reason to do that. It could be that Cold Steel just decided to, to tone it back on the G10 there. You get a S35 VM blade, which I may or may not have already mentioned, but the heat treat on this is excellent. I've had this knife just about a year, um, and I've never had to sharpen it yet. Um, I've never used a, uh, a honing steel or a, a strop or anything, um, and I use this knife pretty frequently. You know, I'm not cutting downwards into uh, bags of rocks or anything of that nature, so um, <laughs> it's a little inside joke, guys. But, uh, you know, the edge and the blade for about a hundred bucks, you're getting a huge bargain. Excellent, excellent bargain. And this is a knife you can beat up on. Um, I haven't beat up on it, but it has taken some, some beatings. And, you know, some of the DLC coating is chipping off. Um, particularly on the lock area and the clip, which to me is great. More character, you know, if you go to Microtech right now, they'll charge you more for one of these that's beat up. Um, it's like a fashionista thing, you know, you pay more for jeans that are, that are ripped up in this world than a brand new pair of, uh, salvage denim. So, uh, all in all, you got to give this knife, I want to say 10 out of 10, guys, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to give it a 9.5, and, um, and that's mainly just for the action. You get a pretty snappy close action here, which can, you know, it kind of restricts how you use the knife. Um, it could be, look, I'm not scared of the knife at all. I know how to handle the knife, but it can be a little dangerous. Um, if you're not paying attention, it can snap your finger and a knife like this from cold steel sharpened the way that it is, you know, it's going to, it's going to bite you good. You know, it's, it's not going to be a chihuahua bite. It's going to be a, a Rottweiler bite. So it's going to get in there. Um, and then there you go. The other part is that sometimes you can fail to flip this knife. Um, it's not all the time, but most of the time. Uh, it's going to open excellently, but there's times where I go to flick it and then boom, something, you know, the spring gets in the way or I didn't do it. I didn't get full contact with my finger. Um, you know, whereas when you, you have a knife, like a, a spider co, you're not going to fail opening this knife like ever. It's impossible. You know, it just opens, right? super duper easy right so you know i think they could have done you know a better job here with the the uh the thumb plate here i don't know why it's not focusing for you guys I'm trying to get it to there we go so you can see that it's certainly biased to the right side um, and I tried at one point, I believe, to screw it, and you can kind of see that, um, to make it more 50-50. And I don't know what it is, but it just kind of like spun in place. So, you know, everything, you know, you can find something wrong with everything if you truly look. But if you're looking through um, some some magic glasses you're gonna find this to be perfect i mean 
the knife is pretty damn close to being perfect. And, you know, a nine and a half for a $90 to $115 range knife, um, I'm not going to complain, uh, you know. So, and just for example, you know, here's a Spider Codelica. I don't know what I paid for this, maybe 100 bucks. Could have been even more, could have been 120 bucks. This knife's not perfect. I don't even feel the need to review this knife because, you know, I, I have a lot of things I could say about it. But um, it's not far from perfect, but it's no Recon 1, I'll tell you that. Um, and the manufacturer um, in Taiwan is making a really, truly beautiful, beautiful knife here. I mean, if you took Taiwan off the back here and you put USA, they'll, you nobody would ever know. The knife is gorgeous. I love this knife. I love it so much. I bought another one, you know. I bought a Tanto. And we're going to do a disassembly video shortly after this, guys. Um, I will be disassembling this. We'll go over why. And we'll do the, all the hows as we go through the video. Um, I have disassembled this a bunch of times. Just FYI. So it'll be a, a smoother disassembly for you guys to watch if you're interested. Um, and it could pertain to a lot of cold steel knives as a lot of the knives are designed similarly. And... Uh, I mean, it's so nice you had to buy it twice. Subscribe, like, comment below, guys. Have a killer day. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon.